NDTV Profit. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It's wonderful to be here at the 25th Annual Convention of the Indian Association of Tour Operators. The fact that the 25th Annual Convention of the Indian Association of Tour Operators is taking place here in Bangalore, in the state of Karnataka, set me thinking. Is it acknowledgement of the fact that Karnataka has finally arrived as a tourism destination? Well, over the next half hour, we're going to try and answer that question, look at all of the milestones that have been achieved, what the unfinished agenda is, and draw up an action plan. And we have with us people who know the nuts and bolts of tourism in Karnataka. A quick round of introductions, starting from my left. Rajesh Mudgil, Joint uh, Secretary with the Indian Association of Tour Operators. K. Vishwanath Reddy, Director, Department of Tourism with the Karnataka Government. K. Jodi Ramalingam, Principal Secretary, Tourism with the Karnataka Government. V. Madhu, Principal Secretary, Infrastructure Development Department, Karnataka Government. Cherian T. Ramapuram, President of the Karnataka Tourism Forum and Director with Orange County Luxury Resorts. And we have Vinay Lutra, Managing Director, Karnataka State Tourism Development Corporation. Gentlemen, good to have you all here. One key message one has picked up is that perhaps Karnataka can go the extra mile in disseminating the many worlds that are Karnataka. And treat me as an ordinary tourist coming from the north of this country with not much knowledge of Karnataka. I know that post-2002, a lot of concrete steps have been taken to reach out to domestic travelers, international travelers, and we won't get into the nitty-gritty of that. But what's the future interaction, what's the future targeted approach to reach the customer? Yes. We have to project our Karnataka's various destinations and our uh, tourism potential. We have plans like marketing meet, road shows, as well as Karnataka Utsav in major cities in Karnataka, in India, as well as the destinations outside India. We started our road shows in Ahmedabad just a few weeks, few weeks ago in New Delhi and we are also going to have these road shows come marketing meet in Chennai, Bombay, Calcutta and other destinations and we have also taken steps to participate in 11 international tourism fairs. The next one that is the Jatapata and the Dubai, WTM, Paris, Argentina, what not. We have lined up our marketing strategy and we have a three-year plan with us. Therefore, we hope that at the end of the third year, the question now what they have raised, they may have to modify it. Okay, so you're saying you got your eye on the ball as far as communication is concerned. Mr. Luthra, I want you to tell me from personal experience, also handling golden chariots, you know this whole, let's get that knowledge out there to the traveler. What's your own experience been when you're selling the proposition that is Karnataka? See, I've been involved with Karnataka tourism for almost 10-12 years now. And as most of you will realize that ITBT was something which Karnataka gave a lot of importance in the past and that is where most of the budgets were going and let me just share that just five six years back uh, Karnataka's budget for tourism was in the range of 15 crores when Kerala our neighbor had 150 crores today things have changed today Karnataka's tourism budget is one of the highest in country 250 crores and with that kind of money we are now able to project Karnataka in the rightful way what it deserves in the tourism sector and I am sure with this experience Karnataka is going to become one of the key states. Um, you mentioned about Golden Chariot which has been recently launched last year in Karnataka. Again it shows the seriousness of Karnataka government in promoting the state you know we had so many infrastructure problems in uh, 
not having good hotels at some of these beautiful destinations like Hampi, Badami, etc. To overcome these problems, we decided why not till the infrastructure comes, have a luxury train which can take the tourists to in a comfort, comfortable way to all these destinations. Of course, it's unfortunate that we're, uh, you know, in, in the past 12 months, it hasn't been easy for the world at large, for the world economy at large, and hence, obviously, for tourism as well. And I know that that is on the, everyone's minds. But the Carnatic Tourism Forum, coming back to this whole let's build awareness, the Carnatic Tourism Forum is born out of that, isn't it? Yeah, the Carnatic Tourism Forum was, uh, it, it, this was um, started about five years back. Then it was not very active. But with the slowdown, we, we came up with this idea of reviving this uh, forum. And what has happened of late is that all the, the, the local heads of their offices, the CUNY, the LPTI, uh, all of them are members of Kannada Tourism Forum. We are not another association. We are drawing from these associations, from their strengths, and we want to support them. We want to partner with them. We want to partner with the government also and make this happen. Let me play the role of Sinek here. One state, many worlds. Totally appreciate that in the context of Karnataka. But that in itself also poses a challenge. Which of these worlds are you going to project? Which of these worlds are you going to prioritize as symbolic of the Karnataka experience? And, and I'd like you to be honest here because, you know, when you have uh, heritage, when you have the festivals, when you have nature, when you have the Western Ghats, when you have the scenic beaches, which proposition is the most compelling proposition and how have you prioritized that? Taking into consideration the diversity of uh, tourist uh, destinations in our state, uh, it is very difficult to say which, which one of which, which sector of uh, tourism that we are going to highlight. We have uh, excellent heritage uh, uh, sites and monuments in our state. In fact, we want to focus uh, heritage as our uh, main focus. Uh, added to that, we want to focus uh, wellness and uh, medical tourism in our state. Government of India has recently uh, come up with uh, guidelines of uh, an Ayush uh, guidelines. We have adopted Ayush guidelines and we are coming up with uh, accreditation of uh, Ayush uh, uh, wellness centers. Uh, we have also got uh, excellent uh, medical facilities available, particular, particularly in Bangalore. We have uh, every kind of international uh, hospital chains that is present in Bangalore today. The expenditure involved for uh, treatment in Bangalore hospitals. It's very competitive. Very, very com competitive. And that's been recognized around the world. <laughs> Now, when you're selling the proposition to a foreign traveler, to a domestic traveler, there may be different uh, USPs to position. So would the wellness and the heritage be targeted primarily for the international traveler? What mix have you decided upon for domestic and international? Wellness, mainly we want to target the international travelers. So Our strength is, is Ayurvedic, Yunani, Yoga, Siddha, and naturopathy. Unfortunately, we were not able to take the required mileage out of these sectors. I think Rajesh has a point to make. No, because you see, I, I would like to differ a little bit because you know when you say which product you would like to give preference to. Now you know you're you are asking me a question, we have so many states, which state I would like to promote? Because we are promoting entire India. Similarly, you see, if you have uh, cultural heritage, if you have uh, a jungle experience, you have golden chariot, so it, it, it makes a total package together. So we would like to sell the in, you know, entire state as a package, not uh, only the wellness tour or uh, golden chariot. I ask that simply because we have to acknowledge that there is, you know, simple recall is effective. So one state means beaches, another state means mountains. But you know, it all boils down to good infrastructure. And uh, you know, you've acknowledged that, uh, Mr. Madhu, that you know, infrastructure action steps are being taken. But just isolate those that complement Karnataka's tourism ambition and flesh that out in greater detail. The airport and airstrips which we have planned and. Uh, under implementation that is uh, taking you to the corners of uh, the, the the state we have 
29 districts today, one more will be added 30. We are connecting 23 districts, district headquarters. And that is happening and all of them, a few of them are getting commissioned now, a few of them will be commissioned in about the time period we have put is two years. Of course, the rail infrastructure we are, you know, trying to connect for the, the you know, the lower middle level and middle level passengers. That is also we are, you know, in total association and cooperation with the railways. Railways money get distributed, but therefore we have started chipping in from 2001 uh, uh, onwards with contribution. On the road transport, you know, uh, both on the, you know, laying the roads, the 10,000 kilometers of roads are, you know, going to be ready in the next 30 months. Then the bus system, we have one of the very, one of the most efficient bus systems in this, in the, in the country. So we have a well, well connected, uh, you know, road transport system for the middle uh, industry. And the metro systems and all, they will all be commissioned about five, six years. And they will, of course, obviously so complement tourism. We, this would complement tourism. You know, I see one big brand housed in Karnataka and that is Bangalore. For the last 11 years that I have been a business journalist, I have seen the frequency with which foreign CEOs now do New York, Bangalore, New Delhi, Bombay, or Boston, Bangalore, Bombay, New Delhi. So Bangalore is their first stop. It's a priority stop. It's a big brand. And you are getting guaranteed eyeballs, footfalls, entry into the city. Is there a consciousness of converting this captive footfall into a greater Karnataka experience? If you just look at how Karnataka tourism has developed in the last few years, the Bangalore corporate uh, IT BT has played a very important role because they are our major clients if we talk of Orange Counties or Jungle Lodges or whichever. All the top CEOs, all the top people working in IT BT do come to our uh, hotels and they are the people then who talk about it to their foreign clients when they come in the CEOs of big IT companies and all the stressed out techies are also heading to Orange County yeah Orange County has been I mean uh, I must say about 35 percent of all our business comes from Bangalore it's a huge market and there's no dearth of money here there's no uh, uh, the, the, the slowdown has actually not touched Bangalore, we should say. Uh, of course, you know, there are certain areas where it, is, it has been affected, but generally it has not uh, hit Bangalore badly. So we have a good supply of, uh, of tourists from Bangalore. Mr. Mudgal, it's all well to talk about infrastructure and policy at a macro level and investment that's, you know, in the pipeline. But it's the day-to-day -day nitty-gritty issues that operators have to deal with that can often be a deterrent as well. Uh, can you think of any tweaking on the taxation front and on just the administration front that can make life much easier for, for tourists in Karnataka? You see, when we talk about this taxation, I think Karnataka has the highest taxation in the southern state, number one. And then uh, when we are talking about the permit part, Karnataka, you see, if a coach is coming from Kerala, uh, they will give them a permit only for seven days. And after seven days, if, say, for example, if a group is for ten days in uh, Karnataka, they will have to go back after seven days to the border to get the permit again. And then I would like to say that about 20 years back, uh, Karnataka was number one destination in southern part. But gradually it went down because of the high taxes, it became very expensive. Kerala bounced back in a very, very big way. And today, majority of tour operators prefer to uh, combine Tamil Nadu and uh, Kerala rather than Karnataka. Because as soon as we touch Karnataka, the cost goes really sky high. Well, I can see that Mr. Jodi Ramalingam wants to take that question head on. Um, I'm sure it's a worry area and you're thinking about it. Whether you have all of the answers, I don't know. A crying child gets, gets attention. Probably the cry was not loud enough for us to hear. Now we are able to hear. Therefore, it will be addressed. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs>
the best person to answer is our ex-commissioner, commercial taxes, who was responsible for introducing VAT in Karnataka, <laughs> Mr. Madhu. Of course, we have introduced VAT and we definitely know that we have started very high in taxation and mm. you are right. So slowly through the years we are uh, coming down in taxation that the GDP tax ratio, uh, there are NAV atoms. I am not promising here because I am not competent to do that, but I know the special entry tax and entry tax, they probably will go away in, uh, sooner than uh, later. So only that much I, I would say. Uh, the other <laughs> luxury tax has come down, substantially as it has come down. Yeah, again, as uh, the Principal Secretary uh, mentioned, I will uh, transmit this uh, cry uh, to the concerned uh, in the government. But we have been coming down slowly, but... Luxury tax on hotels and other things, now it is on par with the other southern states. Last year, it was higher and the KTF at the right moment before the budget was presented, yes, exactly at the right moment, at the right loud noise, they could make the... A request and it reached us and addressed and it was reduced and kept on par with the other southern states. So yeah. Thank you very much for that but also I would like to reassure you on other front that uh, we are not only asking you to reduce taxes. I am sure once you reduce these taxes with the more tourists moving in, uh, you will be making much more money in the form of other taxes. So I am sure uh, on, on a revenue front you will not be losing much. We fully agree and as our uh, tourism policy is addressing all the concessions and incentives as available in our new industrial policy 2009-2014 is mutatis mutandis applicable to all the tourism related infrastructure projects. It is stamp duty exemption entry tax exemption we have got in our industrial policy you have got some exemption on the entry tax and in our tourism policy we have got special incentive construction incentive or selected uh, taluks and uh, districts up to a maximum of 35 lakhs we are providing so that people can find projects and then invest okay so let me get mr ramapuram in on that because you know you would have on the ground experience of what it is like to make investments here in the tourism sector in Karnataka. What's your sense right now of the policy, how it promotes investment, and what your peer group and your, yourself included are planning over the next five years? We have had many policies before, but this is a new one, and we have contributed to that also. They have taken us seriously and made some modifications according to our suggestions too. Uh, two main things that we face, the, the, uh, the investors face in... Uh, Karnataka is, there has been um, a study by KPMG and they have put Gujarat as the most uh, investment friendly state and Karnataka is third from the bottom. But we are working very closely with Karnataka, the, the government is very very receptive, things are changing very fast. The two main things, uh, uh, issues that we face is what, what we need for investment in Karnataka, especially in tourism sector, is one, a consistent, constant strategic investment in, uh, in, in marketing and promotions uh, that will bring Karnataka to the forefront. And the second would be to clear, there are 42 permissions that we need to take before we, step, we, we can start building a resort or a hotel. So we need to clear that a lot and we are already working, there, there is uh, the KSTDC. That's what I wanted to bring Mr. Luthra in on because there is a special purpose vehicle that's being designed to take care of all of this uh, back-end approvals running around that investors would face. Yes, in KSTDC we are very shortly forming a joint venture company with a private partner as well as IFCI of uh, Government of India which would acquire lands get all the permissions, develop the DPRs, tender it out and get the private partners, arrange for the finance, take it up to the financial closure with our partners and that JV is quite advanced now, we are taking it to the cabinet very shortly and once that joint venture company comes, we will address most of the issues that are in the tourism sector at least uh, as, as, much, as uh, far as the investments are concerned and let me tell you our policy has put a target of 10 to 15,000 crores investment in the tourism sector in the next five years. So, 
is there any timeline a timeline on when that uh, new SPV will be operational? See, as I said, you know, it is very advanced, and uh, my principal sector is saying kind. that within four weeks it will be ready because it's the in the final stages. It has just to go to the cabinet. As soon as the cabinet approves, we are on. You know, I've tried to uh, bring up all of the issues that the industry, the private industry, um, could be facing, and you know, the government's response to them. But I think we have time for a question. The main thing in the world is now green tourism and eco tourism and responsible tourism. Karnataka has got many coveted uh, uh, organic farms and uh, the Western God is bio art spot in the whole world. So what Karnataka can do something about responsibility in promoting this organic tourism? Yes, we have scope. If you feel that uh, it is regarding this uh, real eco-tourism from water conservation plus electricity generation and exclusive 100% eco-friendly, we have some investment subsidy. This investment subsidy can be directed towards this type of projects. We want to shake, showcase only one aspect in Hampi, that Hampi we wanted to make a solar city. We would like to ensure that the entire night light will be provided by the solar energy. You can give your proposals, we, the investment subsidy what we have got, definitely we will see that they are also included and eligible to get our investment subsidy. Final question to you gentlemen and uh, I'm not sure which of you would like to answer it. We've talked about all of the policy action and the roadmaps. Is there a figure that you've set for yourself in terms of number of tourists who step into Karnataka by such and such year? If there is that number, share it with us. Well, I'm afraid that I may not be in a position to uh, give the number, but everyone is entitled, entitled to have a vision. So what is Karnataka tourism, our vision? That is making tourism Karnataka's largest and principal economic uh, activity, income generator, employment generator. I do not want to fix that, look, we want 10 million, why not 15 million? So sky is the limit. Karnataka, we would like to be the number one state. If other state is having 15 million, we would like to have 16 million. Our ambition and vision has no limits. And yet the most sobering statistics are those that come from much smaller places like Hong Kong and Singapore and the number of tourists they manage to attract. Those are indeed sobering statistics. Before that, you know, I would also like to add that wherever IATO has gone, after that the numbers have definitely increased. You see from uh, Bhubaneswar, they have acknowledged that there is an increase of at least 15 to 20 percent business there. And when we were there in uh, Andhra Pradesh, we gave certain uh, recommendations with, at that time uh, that then uh, CM Mr. Chandra Babu Naidu followed. And today you can see the world class uh, uh, mice uh, center there. And the business is uh, roaring, so I'm sure after this, because you see IATO members are uh, responsible for bringing in at least 85% uh, of foreign tourists to India, and we are also involved in a big way in uh, domestic market. So once all our members will have this first-hand experience, I'm sure uh, the business is going to increase manifold here. Thank you, gentlemen. It's been good talking to you, and uh, thank you for being involved in this discussion. Thank you. This is NDTV and you're watching NDTV Profit.